having choice of the role that you're going to undertake is a is a really great strength and, and part of the part of the benefit of occupational medicine is the number of different things you can do the number of different ways you can develop your working life there's there's so many options that you have as an occupational physician you can you can see patients in clinics regularly as as you would uh, in, a, in a GP practice or a clinic based specialty uh, but you can uh, it's the sort of specialty that lends itself to having a portfolio career so if you had interest in other areas if you were interested in being a GP and an occupational physician at the same time that would be uh, entirely optional, plausible and a reasonable option. If you uh, need to have flexible working, occupational medicine is a, is a specialty which uh, generally can accommodate that. You can work in industry uh, or you can work for the NHS. So you could be helping uh, NHS uh, employees and NHS trusts uh, manage, manage their workforce and their workforce's health. And um, in industry there's a, there's a lot of different uh, aspects to your work and different ways that you can work. So some occupational physicians work in-house, they work for a company and they are as part of an occupational health team which works uh, within that company. So BT has an occupational health department, Transport for London does, uh, BP does and uh, those are uh, very interesting jobs because in those roles you can uh, influence directly uh, board level decisions uh, which influence the whole workforce. As an occupational physician working in a company, you uh, will tend to have a fairly senior role, and some occupational physicians uh, choose to move away from clinical practice and work more in, in very strategic uh, areas of business. And uh, obviously you still retain your GMC license, you still retain your duties of a doctor, but you can really affect change for a large number of people. And that's a really, that's a really rewarding part of any job, being able to feel that you are making um, a difference. Uh, in that sort of role, in a strategic role, you may not be making uh, a difference to an individual person, but to be able to make a difference to uh, an entire workforce, to be able to put in a program which helps reduce obesity levels or help put in a program which increases fitness or encourages people to use the stairs or encourages people to cycle to work or uh, improves um, respiratory health by encouraging engineering controls to make sure that people aren't inhaling dust. All these sorts of things uh, can be affected and influenced by occupational positions. The flexibility you have is not just in whether you work for the NHS or industry or for a provider company or in-house. Occupational medicine has a lot of interesting subspecialties that you can be involved in. For example, uh, you could be an aviation medic uh, and there's qualifications for that. One of the qualifications for being an, an aviation medic or one of the way of, ways of getting the competencies that you need to become an aviation medic is to do a private pilot's license. A private pilot's license can be a legitimate qualification that you as a doctor can have to be able to, quali to, to practice in a certain area. I think that's just brilliant. Uh, but in addition to aviation medicine, you can do dive medicine. Um, you can uh, learn about uh, how pressure works for on the body and, and, and its influence in that. And there's obviously a crossover with aviation medicine. There's specialisms in uh, sort of offshore, uh, looking after people offshore, which has its own uh, complexities. Um, and uh, also there's, there's a need for people who have uh, relevant medical specialties with an occupational interest. So if you're a respiratory physician, if you're a psychiatrist, if you're a rheumatologist, uh, you know, a large uh, amount of uh, occupational uh, health uh, disease and occupational health problems are related to mental health and related to musculoskeletal problems. Um, but even if your primary specialty wasn't GP, or musculoskeletal related or mental health related, the experience that you have, the experience that you've already had as a doctor is so useful. So if you are in oncology or in palliative care or in cardiac medicine, you have experience with patients, you have experience working with doctors, you have life experience uh, in, in, in working uh, in, in, in many different areas that you've, you, you've, you've picked up as a doctor. And it's amazing how transferable those skills are to occupational medicine because doctors are taught to be good communicators, doctors are taught to be able to negotiate with people and if you like using those skills, if you like uh, really understanding why someone is having difficulty with a certain person or a certain aspect of their job, if you like trying to really be holistic about the way that you're, you're thinking and you're approaching people 
approaching patients and approaching the solution to a problem, occupational medicine is a really good option. Mm -hmm.